When it comes to muscle growth, one thing is now very clear. The training volume is the main driver by far. Meaning, the more effective training you do, the more muscle you will grow. With one caveat, that more volume is only better up to a point. Where if you do too much, overtraining with all its unpleasantries will eventually become a problem. While on the other hand though, if you do too little, you will leave gains on the table. So the question becomes, how many sets per muscle group should you train with in order to build muscle quickly, safely and effectively without getting overtrained? Well, that's a great question, which we'll get to in a moment. But before that, let's quickly look at why I think number of hard sets per week is the most convenient way to define a measure training volume when it comes to muscle growth. So what is a hard set? A hard set is when a set is taken either close to or to the point of muscular failure. This means that the set will be so fatiguing to all the muscle fibers that it will stimulate maximum muscle growth. And here's why hard sets is a great measure of training volume. A while back, Greg Knuckles wrote an awesome article called Can we predict muscle growth? In the article, he basically concluded that out of all the ways that we can measure training volume when it comes to muscle growth, number of hard sets probably do so the best. The first reason for this is that number of hard sets takes different exercises into consideration. It's been shown that for muscle growth specifically, the exercises you choose doesn't matter that much as long as they target the muscles you want to train effectively. For example, if you want to grow your chest, you will grow equally well from a challenging set of barbell bench press as you will from a challenging set of dumbbell bench press. So when it comes to quantifying and measuring the amount of training you do, one set is pretty much equal when it comes to growth across different exercises. As long as exercise is effective, meaning it allows you to safely go through a full range of motion with a heavy enough weight that are known to cause growth and heavy enough seems to be when training about 20% of 1RM to failure. Okay, and the second reason is that number of hard sets takes different amounts of reps per set into consideration. 30 reps taken to failure will cause similar growth as 6 reps taken to failure. The only difference between rep ranges is that it's more convenient to accumulate enough training volume in the medium rep range, which would be around 5 to 12 repetitions. So, using a number of hard sets is a great way to measure training volume across different rep ranges as well. With two exceptions, of course. That the higher rep range, 12 and above, causes a bit more junk volume, meaning a lot of ineffective reps, while these reps simultaneously uses up a bit of your recovery. And on the flip side, the lower rep ranges, below 5 reps, forces you to do more sets in order to achieve enough training volume to ma maximize growth. But if you keep your training mostly in the medium rep range, uh, 5 to 12, then number of hard sets per week becomes a solid measuring tool for quantifying training volume. Okay, so why is it number of hard sets per week? Well, in simple terms, so that you can apply the volume range to your preferred training frequency. If you train a master group 3 times per week, you should divide your total number of sets over those days, so that you still work with the correct volume recommendations. Which brings us to the question, how many hard sets per muscle group and per week should you do to maximize growth? When it comes to quantifying training volume for muscle growth, we can nowadays, thanks to the hypertrophy god himself, Brad Schoenfeld, make decent scientific recommendations based on his publications. During the last two years, Brad has published two awesome papers with the goal to devise evidence-based guidelines on training volume for muscle growth. Let's start with paper number one where I would set the bottom limit of training volume. The first paper was a meta-analysis published in 2017, where Brad and his team pulled all the data from a large number of studies on training volume for muscle growth. And here's what they found. Doing 10 sets per muscle group per week costs more muscle growth than doing 5 sets per muscle group per week. This shows us that there is in fact a dose-response relationship between more volume and more muscle growth. In other words, the more volume you do, the more you will grow. Now, even though these findings are very compelling, this meta-analysis still has a couple of shortcomings. The first one is that out of the 15 studies included in the analysis, only two of them was on trained subjects. The rest was on untrained subjects. And this is very important to take into consideration. Because, to quote Brad himself, the early phase of training is associated with a different adaptive response compared to the later stages. Thus, you can't necessarily generalize findings to well-trained lifters. And second, they were not able to determine any effects of doing more than 10 sets per week, simply because there wasn't sufficient research looking at higher training volumes. 
With that said though, this meta-analysis still provides us with good enough information to make our first recommendations, which is that most beginners and early intermediates should train with at least 10 sets per muscle group per week if the goal is to maximize muscle growth. Okay, so now that we got the bottom limit established, let's look at the top limit. Paper number 2, where I will set the top limit of training volume. In order to outline recommendations on the top limit of training volume for muscle growth, the second paper recently published by Brad comes in handy. In this study, they had 34 males who were 24 years old on average, with 4.4 years of training experience on average. These males were divided into three groups. A low volume group who did 6 sets for upper body muscles and 9 sets for quads per week. The work was spread out over 3 total workouts. They had a medium volume group who did 18 sets for upper body muscles and 27 sets for quads per week. The work was also spread out over 3 total workouts. And finally they had a higher volume group who did 30 sets for upper body muscles and 45 sets for quads per week. The work was also spread out over 3 total workouts. In the study, the guys performed these sets to muscular failure with the following exercises. Bench press, overhead press, wild grip pull downs, seated cable rows, back squats, leg press, one-legged leg extensions. The study duration was 8 weeks. And here's the results. For muscle growth, they saw, just as they did in the 2017 meta-analysis, a clear dose-response relationship between more training volume and muscle growth, where the muscle thickness of the participants increased significantly more in the high volume group than in the low volume group. Based on these findings, the current recommended upper range of training volume are, to quote Brad's recently published blog post discussing this paper, Volume is a primary driver of muscle growth, with more sets translating into greater gains. Upper body hypertrophy continued to show beneficial effects with 30 sets per muscle per week, and continued lower body gains were seen with 45 sets per muscle per week. This is a bit shocking in my opinion, and here's why. Before this study was published, all we had to go on when it comes to recommending top limits of training volume was anecdotal evidence observed by top level natural bodybuilding coaches. Their observations was that, on average, once someone passes 20 to 25 sets per week, they start to experience recovery problems, which would often result in overreaching and eventually a plateau and a drop off in muscle growth. And that's why the recent study by Brad is a bit shocking. Or is it? Well, here's the thing. If your goal is to truly maximize muscle growth, then you must train with volumes that are high enough to place you just at the brink of where you're no longer able to recover. Because when you're no longer able to recover, that's when you go into an overreach state. Right before the overreaching happens, however, that's when you're maxing out your muscle growth. And here's a great illustration of this. As you can see, the point where the bell curve goes from green to red is the point where an individual no longer are able to recover. And we're not yet sure where this will happen on average, that's why I put many sets as the last parameter. All we know at this point, thanks to the study we're discussing, is that for trained individuals, 30 sets for upper body muscles and 45 sets for leg muscles, or the quads, per week, is still somewhere within the green area of the bell curve. So, based on this information, we could jump to the conclusion that 30 sets for upper body and 45 sets for lower body, or at least the quads, per week, is a decent top limit recommendation for volume, at least for more advanced trainees. However, we shouldn't be so quick to jump the gun, because high numbers like these might only be doable in the short term, which is probably also why the anecdotal observations are down at 20 to 25 sets per muscle group per week. So now I'm sure you're wondering, why is this only doable in the short term? Well, because fatigue is accumulative. This study only lasted for 8 weeks, and to quote Brad once again, the human body is very resilient and handles high levels of stress well in the short term. When these stressors are properly managed, there is a positive adaptive response. In the case of high resistance training volumes, the upshot is greater muscle growth. However, persistent exposure to such stressors ultimately overtaxes the body's ability to respond, leading to an overtrained state. In other words, for each session and week that you train with very high volumes close to what you can maximally recover from, you're essentially digging yourself a little hole in your recovery capacity throughout the duration. This means that, for example, on week 2 of a high volume training program, you might be a few sets out of overreaching, you feel fine and are making huge gains. But once you're at week 8, you might surpass your recovery capacity and start to overreach, because of accumulated fatigue. This is when you start to plateau, you start to feel like shit, and eventually decline in gains. If you were to train with very high volumes and start to overreach, you must bring down the fatigue you have accumulated if you want to continue making gains in the future. 
and this can effectively be done with Delos and lower volume phases, which would be weeks or even months where you are stepping off the gas and turning down the volume to allow your recovery to keep up. Your training would then look like this. But one concern and speculation I have when it comes to the approach of training maximally for a period and then using lower volume phases to bring down fatigue is that it might be unnecessary. I think that taking it easier might cause the same long term results anyways, simply because you don't have to use as many low volume phases and delos in between. Just like this. As you can see, both approaches reach the same endpoint in muscle growth after 6 months. The difference is that the high volume approach trains a lot, then delos, trains a lot, then delos and so on, while the medium volume approach just makes steady gains without the need of delos. There is no current scientific evidence, at least not what I can find, currently showing any difference between these approaches when the main goal is muscle growth. For strength and other performance sports on the other hand, it's been clearly shown that periodization is necessary to reach peak performance. So based on my own purely logical assumption, taking it easier would provide the same results in the long term when the goal is muscle growth, because you can go at it for longer with less rest in between instead. And there's an upside to this, which is that not training close to what you can maximally recover from is likely better for the following reasons. Number one, it's safer, both from an injury standpoint and an overtraining standpoint. Number two, it's easier psychologically, not having to do 15 sets of legs three times per week. And number three, it's not as time consuming. Now, we also need to look at individual differences. Just because these 11 guys in the high volume group got more gains than the guys in the other groups, doesn't automatically mean that every individual who's trained an average of 4.4 years will get the same results. No, individual differences, mainly genetics, will skew these numbers up and down. Some individuals may get totally crushed from doing 20 sets per muscle group per week, while others might be able to surpass 30 to 45 sets per week and still be able to hammer the work week in and week out, even though they have the same training experience. Not only that, food and sleep habits slash states, as well as overall daily stress levels, will skew the recovery part of the equation up or down. This will also cause some people to recover better than others and hence be able to do more work. Furthermore, even different body parts can handle different amount of volumes. For example, some people need to hammer their lats with tons of sets to make them grow and they handle it well, while their pecs are smoked yet they grow well from 10 to 15 sets per week. Yeah, I'm talking about myself here. Okay, so finally, here are my initial recommendations for maximizing muscle growth. 10 to 30 plus sets per muscle group per week for upper body muscles, 10 to 45 plus sets per muscle group per week for lower body muscles. As you can see, it's one heck of a range. But here's the deal. When accounting for all the individual differences, these are the numbers I'm confident recommending based on the evidence just reviewed. The biggest factor deciding the amount of volume you should do is training experience. Putting a beginner who just stepped into the gym on 45 sets per muscle group per week would be ludicrous. On the other hand, someone who's been training for 5 years and are already very muscular would probably see extremely slow if any growth from doing only 10 sets per week. So when you decide how many sets per muscle group you should do, you must take all of these things into consideration. Once you have done so, then all what's left to do is just trying it out on yourself. And here's how by allowing for progressive overload, which is the key to long-term gains. So before finishing up this video, I quickly want to touch on something that nearly all experts agree on when it comes to natural trainees, which is that progressive overload is more important than just performing volume. This means that if a person is not performing better, which would be getting stronger in the gym over time, they're likely not getting that much bigger either. In other words, the amount of volume you do must be enough to drive further adaptations. Because as we have already covered, if you do too much volume, you will plateau because of overreaching or overtraining. Your body will only be able to recover and not adapt. If you do too little, you will only maintain your current musculature and performance because of non-sufficient stimulus. So a good way to program your volume is this. Start from the lowest amount of volume that still allows you to improve in the gym consistently over time. Then once you start to plateau, that's when you add a bit of volume. Sprinkle in 1-2 to two extra sets per week for the plateaued muscle group. This will allow you to start driving further adaptations again. This approach is great as you will stay away from overreaching slash overtraining and you will also be able to rely on small increments in volume to continue getting bigger throughout your training career.